how will you work with people with disabilities and their representatives to ensure that the national disability strategy is implemented? In other words, that national legislation and policy that is to do with people with disabilities is translated into something local that is believable and understandable and relevant to all of you here in the room. And what will you do to remove the barriers to inclusion that people with disabilities are experiencing so that they can ensure they have an experience of real equality in Carlo and Kilkenny? So basically, uh, the question is about national policy and legislation, and um, it was referred to several times um, during uh, the candidates' uh, replies beforehand, but to make those tangible at local <coughs> level, and then what the barriers are that may militate against people with disabilities being able to access those services, goods, and indeed the promises. Uh, thank you very much, PJ. Uh, I'd like to think that I answered the, the first question. Um, um, I'm going down to the second and third. I wasn't planning on making a point, but it is a point I just feel I have to make, especially considering I said we're being active the watchdog. All our money comes from central taxation. Every single cent that the government spends comes from mostly from central taxation. They all come into the same pot. We constantly hear about difficult choices. Difficult choices the whole time. Yet it's only difficult choices when you're talking about 10, 20 million here and there from pension display, blah, blah, blah then there's always hundreds of millions to be spent on something ridiculous. So I'm sorry, you can't turn around and say, these were tough choices when you spent hundreds of millions on other things. And I'm sorry, but every single cent spent on Irish border could have made up for an insane amount of cuts. And it was completely unnecessary, waste of money. So I have to make that point. Now to get back to the questions, um, question two, in terms of the national disability strategy, um, I read through the strategy. I can't say that it's something which really jumped out at me. Um, it seems to be a bit of a stop in many ways. Um, it talks about, <coughs> I've read a lot of government documents, a lot of treaties and so on, and there's a lot of waffle, essentially, in them. Now the thing is, I believe we need something which comes from the grassroots up, because I believe that the disability um, strategy has been too top down, it's too involved in government. And the, the thing is, I'm a huge believer in grassroots actions because I am a co-founder, one of the leaders of a grassroots party. I believe in building things from the ground up. So I think that we should be looking at, because the disability strategy was written in 2004. It is now 2015. It is being taken out by the current government again. But I think it's time for an update. I think it's time, and I think the way it should be done is that a commission should be set up and it should involve disabled people drafting their own policy themselves. Because I think it's the only way you can get the right policy. And I don't think that's a very hard thing to do. And you can liaise with government and liaise with whoever you need to ensure that report is absolutely and utterly satisfactory to everybody. Um, on the last question, um, I, think, um, I think David and I think Reid are correct when they talk about education. Um, in terms of inclusion, because it is extraordinarily important, especially when we're talking about um, giving people the life skills necessary to um, enter the job market. Um, I am a primary school teacher myself. Um, I'm a qualified primary school teacher. I've worked as a special needs assistant. Um, I'm familiar with the unbelievable importance of the resources on the front line. If you don't have even those minuscule resources you need, even an hour in the classroom, it can make an unbelievable difference. I mean, it is absolutely insane. And I mean, it's not only that, but the class teacher cannot take care of, well, it's extraordinarily difficult. The time it takes to take care of somebody with a disability or with special needs takes away from class teaching time. So it's a double whammy in many respects. So it's not simply that people with disabilities and special needs are suffering as they are, and I know this for a fact. Um, our mainstream class children are also suffering as well. A huge burden is being put on teachers I mean, again, it's just the literally, it's the, it's the amount involved. I mean, it's the amount involved when you consider everything else that's been spent. It is absolutely insane. It should not be happening. It could literally be reversed tomorrow and it will have no impact on our fiscal or economic situation. None. I can guarantee that. Thank you. Thank you.